Hey guys, how's it going? I hope everyone is doing well and stuff. Um, in this video we're gonna be making a popper out of this piece of yew tree, which I actually cut from a tree limb that's right in front of our house. So without further ado, let's head out to the bandsaw and start cutting. As you can see here, I've already cut one side and smoothened that out so that I have a nice base to do my second vertical cut. And after the first um, cut, cut, I realized that this wood is kind of um, difficult to cut with the bandsaw accurately, so I decided, okay, I'm just gonna do two cuts and I'm gonna use my circular saw to take care of the rest and be more, a bit more safe and uh, more accurate at the same time as well. Once I had the desired thickness, which by the way was uh, four centimeters, I'm just going to trace out the outlines of my popper and we're gonna go back to the bandsaw and cut the shape out. Now that I have the rough shape cut out and all my digits still attached, I'm just going to do a little bit of uh, sanding with my belt sander and uh, make everything nice and smooth. So even though I'm hundreds of kilometers away from the ocean, I want to make sure that this popper is going to be ocean water fish proof, which means uh, making this as durable as I possibly can make it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark the center line. I'm going to cut this uh, popper in half and I'm basically going to sandwich the internal wire harness between these two halves. And of course I'm going to have kind of a groove that accepts the wire harness. So. After this we're going to go to the bandsaw and we're going to cut this in half. Once the popper was split, I then just went over to my belt sander and sanded everything nice and smooth. All right, next we're gonna move on to making the cup mouth for our popper. And of course, at this point, it would have been really good help to have a woodworker's compass to draw circles. But unfortunately, I don't have one, so a $2 Canadian coin actually worked perfectly here. So I'm just gonna use that to mark out the outlines. When I was uh, gouging out the mouth for my popper with my Dremel tool, I realized that, you know what, this is actually gonna take a long time to do, and on top of that, it's gonna be very inaccurate. The hole is gonna be, well, I'm gonna have to do a lot of hand sanding. And at that point, I realized, you know what, I'm gonna make a special tool to help me out making the uh, popper cup mouth. So that's what we're gonna do next. All right, basically the goal here is to make a thick wooden dowel that will end up looking like a dildo, I'm sure, but who cares, <laughs> as long as it works. So I'm just gonna start with um, marking the center point. And after that, I'm just going to drill a hole to it that will accept a threaded metal dowel into it. And I will just glue that in.
Alright, so now that the 5 minute epoxy has cured enough, I'm just going to start rounding off the wooden dowel. And at this point I was thinking that, well, it would be nice to have a lathe. Uh, this would have been done in 2 minutes, but unfortunately I don't have one, so I just have to improvise. Speaking of improvising, I decided that the easiest way to make sure that I would get a uh, even out dome uh, to my dowel would be to just uh, attach it to my drill and run it while I was uh, sanding it with my belt sander, which actually ended up working really well. Um, again, having a lathe here would have been nice, but you know, sometimes you just have to uh, get it out, I guess. To do some final touches, I decided to attach the dowel again into my drill press and do some final touches with some sandpaper. Alright, so the next order of business is to attach a piece of uh, sanding paper onto the tool that I've just made. And I actually thought that um, grounding up some sand and then mixing it with epoxy might work as well, but then I just decided, you know, that's going to be too much work, I'm just going to use the sandpaper. So I'm just going to use this um, template that I made to draw out the uh, outlines uh, that I will then cut open and out, and I'm just going to glue that into my tool. Once I was sure that the superglue had enough time to cure and harden, I attached the uh, bit into my drill press and started grinding away. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention that the uh, uh, sandpaper that I used here was grit 60. And I gotta say, I was um, surprised how well this actually held up to my abuse when I started grinding away. Now that I have the cup mouth done, I can start bending some wire and making the internal wire harness. And because I wanted to make sure that the popper is going to be able to withstand a hell of a lot of abuse, I decided to go with um, 302 stainless steel wire, um, which was 1.56 millimeters thick, so fairly thick stuff. Painting the wire itself was pretty straightforward, so I don't think I really need to go too deeply into what I'm doing here. I think uh, the video clip itself should be pretty uh, self-explanatory. <laughs>
Now that we have the wire bent, I'm just going to place it between these two halves and I'm going to use two clamps to make an indentation on the wood itself by basically just clamping them as far as down as I possibly can. Now that I have the indentation all marked out, I'm just going to basically gouge out a channel for the internal wire harness with my Dremel tool. Now that I have the slot for the wire all dremeled out, I'm just going to glue the two halves together. So now the epoxy has cured, I can start profiling my bait. And I'm going to start off by cutting off excess material with my bandsaw first. And then we're going to move on to the belt sander and get everything nice and smooth. Now that I have the profile done, I can start uh, rounding off the bait. And I figured at this point it would be easiest to actually use my disc sander for this job. But later on I will be doing final touches with a knife like I usually always do. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm just going to do the final touches with a knife and to finish rounding this thing off. And because of the nature of how I built this popper, uh, there would have been a big possibility that I would have actually sanded into the hook eyes and uh, possibly the line tie itself too. So we definitely can't have that. So I'm just going to do the final touches with uh, good old manual labor. Next I'm going to do the eye sockets and I know that this would have been way easier to do when the popper was still basically a block of wood, but I completely forgot so we're just going to have to roll with this and uh, use this method instead. 
Unfortunately for me, at this point I didn't have a drill bit that was big enough for the eyes that I have planned for, to use in this project. So I'm just going to have to use my Dremel tool to make the eye sockets fit the eyes that I have already made. As this popper is meant to be resilient and durable, I decided that it would be a good idea to seal the wood before actually applying the epoxy on this uh, bait. So I'm just going to use Olympic water guard that is meant for deck use. And as you can see, the container that I use for this is not big enough, so I'm just going to have to flip it a few times to make sure that the uh, penetration to the wood uh, is going to be good enough. So I actually ended up doing this every hour um, for four times. Even though I was fairly confident that the water guard would have been good enough, I decided that, you know, I'm not going to take any risks, I'm just going to add a layer of epoxy on top of the bait to make sure that it's completely sealed. Now that I'm completely and 100% sure that the wood is sealed, I can start weighing the bait. And since this is very dense wood, it's fairly heavy, I don't actually need a lot of lead. Um, I think it was 10 grams in total, and I'm just going to make sure that the angle of um, it sitting on the water is going to be proper, uh, roughly around 25 to 30 degrees. Now that I have the lead placement all sorted out, I'm just going to drill the hole for it. Wow, that actually almost rhymed. Um, anyways, uh, let's just move on. Next I'm going to fill out the holes that I just drilled, and for that I'm just going to use Bondo. And recently I've been getting a lot of comments and uh, questions here on YouTube why I use Bondo instead of uh, baking soda and superglue, which seems to be very popular nowadays. Um, the easiest answer for that is that it's more economical in the long run. And also, um, baking soda and superglue is for amateurs. Pew pew! Shots fired! Ah! I'm sure that there's many Marlin Bates fans out there right now gasping for air for such an outrageous comment. And I'm just kidding, so don't kill me in the comment section, please. I'm going to add another layer of epoxy on this popper, so I'm just going to sand this all over again and we're going to go back to the uh, roll texture wheel and we're going to put some more epoxy on here. I just realized that I didn't show you guys what epoxy I used uh, previously, so pretty much exclusively nowadays I'm using uh, True Coat epoxy. Hands down the best epoxy that there is for lure making nowadays. And that really is my honest opinion. When I did the painting portion of this video, I heard the news that Alexi Laiho had died. So of course immediately I thought I'm gonna draw some inspiration from Chilot of Bodom. And I think Follow the Reaper is probably my all-time favorite uh, melodic death metal albums, hands down. And of course the stuff that he did on Synergy is pretty freaking kick-ass too. Anyway, we're gonna start off by laying a layer of uh, white. So for a couple of days I was really struggling to find out what sort of paint job should I do. And after a while I decided, okay, I'm, I think I'm just going to go with a mackerel. I've done one mackerel years and years ago on my channel, but um, maybe it's time for an update. That's what I thought at least, and we're going to start off by laying a, a layer of uh, silver. 
Macro as a paint scheme is fairly simple to do, uh, minus the bars, which are actually kind of difficult, but I'm getting ahead of myself. We're gonna paint the back now, and I'm just going to lay a layer of uh, green. Before starting the paint job, I went on to Google and uh, searched a couple of photos of uh, mackerel, and almost all of them have a hue of uh, yellow underneath, uh, either blue or green. So that's what I'm going to add next. When I started painting this uh, paint job, I wasn't really sure yet would I go with either blue or green as the prominent back color, so I just decided to go with both, <laughs> basically. So that's what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to lay a little bit of um, blue on the back. Next I'm going to start uh, making the gill plates, and I'm just going to start with uh, laying a layer of black on the background to highlight them more. Now I can start making the head details, and I'm gonna start with the mouth first. And if you've seen any of my other videos, uh, you already know that um, this is usually how I do it. I start from the mouth and move back. And um, I'm just using these uh, stencils that I made specifically for this uh, paint scheme. And if you want to know how I make these, I'm just gonna link a video that I show this uh, process more in detail. To be honest, there's not that much to say about the other details and how I paint them other than what I try to do is I try to focus on the edge of the stencil and then spray it with um, very thin layers and build it up from there and connect these pieces together in a good way. Now that the head details are painted, I can move on to making the other pieces, and we're gonna go with the fin next. And I'm sure that many of you have seen already how to paint this, so this is not gonna be anything new for you guys. But for those who have not seen it, uh, what I've done here is I've diluted the paint uh, roughly to 50-50 mixture with, um, with a paint thinner. And what that's, that does is it allows me to paint very fine details with my airbrush, which is, by the way, 
Iwata Highline, which has a lot of interesting features like the Mac valve, which allows you to control the amount of uh, air coming through the airbrush from the airbrush itself. And also it has a nut in the back that allows you to uh, control the trigger travel, which I've almost cranked to a point where the trigger doesn't go backwards almost at all, because the, the paint is so much diluted. Um, it's going to come through the airbrush uh, in a rush. Wow, that almost rhymed again. Wow, I'm a, I'm a poet. Um, anyway, um, where was I? Oh, yeah, the, the trigger control. Well, what I've done here is uh, that I've um, basically cranked it to the point where it doesn't go backwards at all, which allows me to spray much more accurately. A mackerel wouldn't be a mackerel without the mackerel bar, so that's what we're gonna do next. And this is probably the most difficult part of the whole painting process, for me at least personally, because I decided to do this free-handed. But what I've done here to help me out just a little bit, I've actually already painted the, um, well, not painted, drawn the, uh, the mackerel bars with a pencil. So I'm just going to follow those uh, marks and hopefully we're gonna be able to make a pretty nice looking mackerel pattern. All right, the paint job is almost done, but I wanted to add one more little detail uh, to maybe jazz things up a little bit more, and that is to just add a little bit of red on the gill plates to emulate as uh, blood coming from, from the gills. One more thing we have to do before I can start coating this thing with epoxy, and that is just to add some eyes and I'm just using 5 minute epoxy to glue in the eyes. And for the epoxying I'm using again that true coat epoxy that I've used earlier. Um, yeah, like I said, this is probably the best epoxy that is out there right now for lure making. Uh, it evens out extremely nicely and the bubbles that you do get when you uh, mix it do pop pretty easily, even um, without using any torch or any heat source, which is nice. Alright, now that the popper has finished, I just wanted to give you guys a better look around the bait and show you guys what it actually looks like all over. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, like the video if you did, subscribe to the channel, and you can also support me on Patreon nowadays if you want. So, until next one, keep on lure making and maybe make one of these uh, awesome looking poppers for yourself.